student center. Ran into a bunch of them up at QT. Yeah, about five of them tonight. <laughs> All right. Uh, good evening. Uh, welcome to the seminar. This is part three of the invisible world. Before I do that, these two guys need prayer. Here's Matthew Love right there. Here's uh, John Sanchez. They moved into our neighborhood. Sex perverts. Community warning. I use these as prayer triggers. Lord, see these two guys right here? You love them every bit as much as you do me or anybody else. I know why these guys are perverts. They got unclean spirits. And I'm asking you to bring them right down here. That's where I want to see them, right here. I know you'll heal them. Amen. Go get them, Lord. All right. Let's get to the seminar. We had a setback this week. I'm sorry about that. The cabinets were supposed to go in this week, and they didn't, so they're going in next week. All right? So we're still in the middle of our plumbing disaster here. We had a major plumbing break underneath the building, and it's been hell on wheels. They had the jackhammer half the building up. Replace the plumbing line under the ground. Oh, it's been horrible. But I cannot believe how many of you have stepped up financially to help us. Thank you for that. It's been amazing. I didn't even worry about it because I knew the money was coming in. No problemo. No sweat. Thank you. All right, let's get to the seminar. I've got a lot of interesting material to go over with you tonight. Okay, the next seminar is, uh, oops, uh, there it is, <laughs> the fourth, four, I think it's the fourth Saturday, of fourth, fourth Friday on February, forgot to type it in there, sorry about that, that's embarrassing, here's our YouTube channel, all my teachings are on there, over 400 of them, plus everybody else, they're all on there, youtube.com slash house of healing AZ. All my radio programs are on here. If you go to the homepage of the website, hardcorechristianity.com, you just hit media and then streaming radio shows. I've been on the radio for over 20 years here in Maricopa County. And uh, if you switch over from Google to Good Search and put in our charity name, they'll donate money to our ministry. It won't cost you anything. They send out the checks, I think, twice a year. Here's uh, something very important. This is my uh, miracle list. If you're a mentally ill Christian, Christian with a bipolar, so to speak, troubled Christians, this is a step-by-step -step guide to healing. It works 100% of the time if I can get people to do it, which is uh, a monumental challenge. And I can only get about 10% of the people that get this list to actually do it. The devil hates this list. As soon as he sees it, he fills it, it depends. Mm -hmm. And he does everything and anything to get them not to do it. Every distraction you could ever imagine. I've had people in here years never finish the miracle list. Still struggling. Literally, I've been watching them. Staring right at them. Years. Never did the miracle list. It's amazing. Supernatural. The weapons of our warfare. Hey, there's a deliverance training course if you'd like to have one. This will save you all kinds of trouble if you're going into the deliverance ministry. 18 classes. It's a lifesaver. There's uh, the teachings of the seven churches. If you want to know what's going on in America and the world right now, that would be interesting. Don't forget about our Wednesday night Zoom service. They usually have about 100 or so people on. It's fantastic. 
6 o'clock on Wednesday nights. You can send me an email, mike at hardcorechristianity.com. I'll send you all the information, or you can go to the Steps of Deliverance on Facebook, too. You can download our app for donations on your phone if you want to, tithely.com. Tomorrow is our prayer group. The Carter's here tonight. No, they'll be here tomorrow at the healing house next door, okay? Our, uh, they're praying for our ministry because, as I mentioned before, uh, we're getting a lot sicker people here coming here from out of state. Many of them are coming from out of state. Many of them are driving here from out of state. Many of them are homeless. Uh, if you see somebody parked in the lot here over by the healing house, they're not casing the joint. They probably drove here to get delivered from out of state. Okay, so we need more prayer here because if you don't get involved in prayer, your anointing just kind of stops there. The only way to get your anointing up is right. Tomorrow at uh, 11 o'clock at the Healing House. Thank you. My training class is tomorrow right here. At noon, I'll see you here. The donation boxes are on the doors there if you want to help us out. Thank you. You can donate by PayPal on the website too. My radio programs are on 1010 AM Christian Radio. I'm on every morning at 7.30 on your drive to work. You say, well, Brother Mike, I don't, I don't work. Well... You just put the kibosh on 20 years of work right there. You got me. I'm on Saturday afternoon and Sunday afternoon on 10, 10 a.m. I'm also on Sunday morning, 8 o'clock, on uh, Conservative Talk Radio, 1100 a.m. Then after that, at 9 o'clock, is my podcast, Bible Study, The Deep Things of God. Just go to twitch.tv, put in HCCABC, and we're together. Uh, YouTubers, now listen, uh, I always remind you every week, please open your ambush team in your church. You need two or three people in the group, and you start picking off the sick people in your church. And before long, they'll literally be lining up. And that's what happened to me years ago at the Dream Center, Scottsdale. I opened up an ambush team. At first, it was just me. I'm fine. Then I got another. And pretty soon on Tuesday nights, that was a midweek service over there, I had them lined up coming for healing. No advertising, nothing. In fact, I was trying to go sub rosa. Yeah. I was sneaking around. I tried to keep it under wraps. It worked temporarily. Then... The minister started to check me out. They wanted to know what was going on. And now I'm here. Let's go to this one here. Now here's the... Um, ladies, here's, here's your big move here. Zoom meeting Monday night. Tuesday night in-person meeting here with Julie and the ministry team. This thing is fantastic. I wrote three books. Um, here they are. This one here, if you're going into the deliverance ministry, this one here, I, I put all the healing and deliverance scriptures in one guide, and there's 20, 21 chapters. I went through all the deliverances in the New Testament. All the scriptures are right there if you need them. You just pop it, and there they are. Instantaneous, you don't even look for it, it's right there. Smooth. Right now, the bookstore is closed, so uh, you can't buy those. <clears throat> Tonight's broadcast is here. We're on Rumble and YouTube tonight. Thanks for watching. We'll be on these later this week. Okay, thanks for watching. There he is. Just put in HOHHCC. Were you there? You're there. Oh, good. Oh. The exciting portion of the seminar is over. Those were the announcements. Now we get to the invisible world. Everybody knows that the natural world 
is not by itself. Everybody knows that, okay? With a couple of exceptions. If you go to an Ivy League school or you got a PhD or something, yeah, you're an idiot. You don't believe in this invisible world. You're too stupid to figure it out. But any normal person knows something's out there. It's real. Any normal person. If you have too much education, no, that your brain's clogged. But a re any regular folks like us, we know the spirit world is real. Everybody knows it. All right, review. Uh, part one, we went through these. Okay. Part one on the invisible world, we went through all of these uh, issues. If you need to review them. And then uh, part two, we went through these issues, which was last month. Where do demons come from? I had categories of spirits, remember? And we went through eight common types of spirits that you'll be running into in your deliverance ministry. You'll be seeing them all the time. Routine eight. And uh, I thought I would go through it again today. Let's continue. Romans chapter 1. It says, the invisible things of him, uh, eratos is the Greek word that means something you can never see with your eyes. It's invisible. Okay? It's not the Greek word to describe the Eiffel Tower, which I cannot see, but actually exists. No, it's not that word. This is the Greek word for there's somebody in here right now listening to me we can't see. See? If you're a born-again Christian, we went over it last week, your guardian angel came to my seminar tonight. Yeah. If you see your guardian angel every night and you're talking to him, you actually named him, uh, please come to the altar tonight. <laughs> you're going to get your face kicked in talking to an angel in your room. Stop doing that. You're going to get smeared. Yeah. Now remember, your guardian angel follows you around all the time. You stand here listening to me. But a guardian angels have limitations. They can't just do anything. Okay? So if you're driving down the street, I've had that testimony many times. Brother Mike, you're not going to believe it. I've, I turned left. This car come out of nowhere and just missed me. Had I been another foot, I'd been dead. Ever heard that one? Yeah, everybody has. That's your guardian angel. He, he blocked something you didn't see and didn't know was going to happen. Okay? Let's say you go home and say, you know what? I'm going to crack out some porn tonight. Your guardian angel is not going to do one darn thing to stop it. Why not? You people need to have your own seminar. <laughs> your guardian angel cannot violate your free will. He's got restrictions. But he will always be there to protect you. Everybody's got one who's a born-again Christian. Uh, the invisible things from the creation of cosmos humanity are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Poema means stuff you produce, you know? For example, uh, I got, I ordered a new dishwasher for the kitchen that's destroyed. And the dishwasher comes from an appliance dealer. The appliance dealer gets the dishwasher from the appliance manufacturer, right? Boom. What you produce is what you are. There they are. Fridge. Everything you see tells you what God is like. Because this is all produced by him. Not this building, but the materials, the creation of the world are being understood by the things that have already been produced. Even his eternal power and Godhead, Greek word theotis, that's where Protestants got the word trinity from. Trinity is not actually in the Bible. Theotes is, and it's usually translated in the King James Bible as Godhead. Yeah. And so they, humans, are without excuse. 
Yeah. So a PhD scientist from Cornell stands before God on Judgment Day, and he has no excuses. No excuses. None. Now, you knew evolution was fake. There was no evolution. You knew scientifically something complex can't come from something that's useless. You knew darn well that, boom, there was no big bang. The only big bang most people run into is after they've had some bad Mexican food. Boom. <laughs> So they have no excuse. You have no excuse. It's common sense. You did not come from an ape, and the universe was not created out of nothing. You have no excuse. Stupid. The last three years, we have seen an avalanche of hoaxes promulgated on the American people. How'd they get away with that? The original hoax decades ago, evolution is real. Better get off that before I get canceled off YouTube. <laughs> you have no excuse. None at all. Okay? You were bo born, created with a conscience. You have a conscience. When I was uh, seventh grade, I went into a 7-Eleven. I stole a magazine. I was a shoplifter. I remember when I got home, I felt uneasy about that. Like, yeah, I did, like I, ooh. I, I didn't feel good about myself. I was seventh grade. What was that? You have no excuse. Humans have no excuse. You have a conscience. I felt that. I sensed it. I shouldn't have stolen that magazine. It was a major theft. Oh, yeah. That's when I knew my IQ was huge. <laughs> I waited just at the right time when that clerk turned and I made the move. Stuff it down there. Raw skill. I see your jealous faces. All right. Who is the image icon? What is an icon? A statue. Statue. Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God. Well, I thought God was a mist of. No, he's got hands, arms, torso, legs, feet, head. That's what Jehovah looks like. Something's going on here. What is it? Somebody, what happened? This is weird. God looks like you. For obvious reasons, he created you and he wanted you as his daughter and you as his son. I want my kids to look similar to me. And the son looks similar to the father. Two arms, two legs, head, two eyes, ears. The first board, the first board of everything being created, Catesis. And in him, meaning Christ, were all things created in heaven and epi upon the earth, visible and invisible whether they be thrones, dominions, principalities, or power. All things were created dia through him and into him, the Lord Jesus. Amazing. First Timothy 1, to the king eternal, immortal, and invisible, the only wise God be honor and glory forever and ever. We cannot see the invisible world, but they can see us. They watch us all the time. They spy on us. In fact, you've been assigned a guardian angel, and you've been assigned demons, and they follow you day and night when you're sleeping, 
100%, 24-7, you're being stalked by the invisible world. They're watching you. When you whisper something, they pick it up. They're learning all about you. They know exactly what you like, what you don't like. They know what bothers you. They know what kind of people bother you. They know what stuff you don't, they know what you like. They know what you enjoy. Everything about you is well known in the invisible world. Everybody knows about it. Your guardian angel knows you like the back of his hand. Everything about you. Demons even try, even try and get your dreams. Yeah, anybody who's had nightmares, repetitive bad dreams, sleep paralysis, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You're being stalked. Somebody's watching you. 24-7. Never ends. Until you drop dead. You're under surveillance. Hebrews chapter 11. By faith, Moses forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, but enduring as seeing him who was invisible. Faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not blepo. Thomas, Jesus said, because you've seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen you're more blessed than Thomas the Apostle you follow that you're following Christ and you didn't see a fraction of the miracles he saw not a fraction nothing Thomas would not be here tonight. We're more blessed than he is. Who wouldn't follow Christ if you saw dozens of resurrections, uh, 2,000 people healed in one service? Yeah, hey, that's, that's somebody I want to hang around. We're blessed because we have not seen and have believed. <clears throat> How'd that go? All right, here we go, next section. These demons are extremely dangerous. They are absolutely awful. Can't even put it in the words. These spirits are the ones that cause Christians to act like sinners. We call them carnal Christians. You can't even tell the difference. When they're at church, they seem like they're saved, and you see them at work, and it seems like they're not saved. They do the same thing as the other Sinners do the Christians laugh at the same dirty jokes. They watch the same programs. They Follow the same things they recreate the same way These are the demons that try and get you to blend into The human world cosmos First Corinthians 2 we have not received the spirit of the world for humanity It's this demon that gets Christians to act like sinners it's amazing. But we got the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us by God. Romans 12, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God that you, everybody's got this memorized, right? That you present your body a living sacrifice. What's the deal with your body? Everybody in the spirit world wants it. They want to use your body to serve God, the Holy Ghost does, and they want to use your body to serve sin. Everybody wants your body. <laughs> Some people have ugly bodies. Doesn't matter. Demons don't care whether you're ugly, fat, stupid, ignorant. They want your body. Give me your body. Because they need a body to wreak havoc. They're disembodied spirits. They don't have a physical body. They need your body. The Holy Ghost is not going to come down here and teach a seminar. He's got to have a body to do it. I volunteered tonight. Somebody else volunteered tomorrow. God works through his children. Demons work through deceived children. Right? Christians that have discernment, 
use their bodies a certain way. Christians who do not have discernment use their bodies a certain way. Everybody wants your body. But you have to present. Notice it says you here. God's not going to take it. The demons will take it. They'll do anything to get it from you. They'll feed you any kind of crappy food, any drugs, any alcohol, any chemicals you want. They'll give it to you if they can get control over your body. If they can control your body, they can control your environment. And they can use you to damage others because they want control of your body. What's the thing they want the most? Yeah, your mind. Why? Because you've got a big mouth. Okay? You've got a big fat mouth. And the demons want to use your fat mouth to damage and hurt others, particularly Christians. They want you to run your mouth negatively, damage their faith, and pollute your family. Everybody wants your body. Everybody has an ulterior motive. But you have to present it to God. God will not take it. So if you say, hey, I'm going to use my body for sin till I drop dead, the good Lord will go, okay. I'll respect that decision. That's your choice. You want to be a screw-up and die a screw-up? No problemo. I'm out. Correct? I mean, <laughs> you, they're not, he's not going to control your body. I'm going to get filled with the Spirit and pray. Huh. I am now a Christian robot. I am going to witness to you. I am going to pray. No, you of your own free will witness to her. You pray for her of your own free will, following the Holy Spirit, suggesting things to you, not forcing you to do them. See? It's not like a marriage. Oops. Uh, <laughs> wife's not here again. I got no problem. You must be a sacrifice. See, right? In the Old Testament, what do we sacrifice? Goats, rams, bulls, all that crap's been moved out. We have one sacrifice, Christ, the living sacrifice. We don't need any more sacrifices ever except one, you. You got to sacrifice your body. Sacrifice? Oh, my God. This guy's a psycho. Yeah, I just said sacrifice. Brother Mike, stop it. I'm going to start cutting again. No. You have to sacrifice your body. Okay, Serving God isn't pleasant all the time. Huh? <laughs> Sometimes you've got to make sacrifices. I, I can see your faces, the, the horror. It's, God, yay. Sacrifice have to be made. Oh, Brother Mike, I don't really want to make any sacrifices. You know, I'm, I'm fat and stupid and lazy. Go your way. But I'm looking for somebody down here tonight who is going to make a sacrifice. Right? Sacrifice for somebody else. Sacrifice in prayer. Sacrifice. Everything requires a sacrifice, doesn't it? I mean, you were in athletics, weren't you? Huh? I was an amateur boxer when I was young. I had to sacrifice. I had to go to the gym and get my face kicked in. Then I finally wised up and said, I'm not going to damage this. This is fantastic. So I stopped. You've got to make sacrifices. Logikos. What is that? Your logical service. It makes sense. Oh, I see it now, Brother Mike. I went to a Brother Mike seminar. Now it all makes sense. I got to make sacrifices. I can't coast all the time. I can't sit and do nothing. I can't sit around waiting for God to drop miracles in my lap. How's that working out for you? Not too good. Do not be conformed. Suskimasidzo. What does that mean? Sketch. It's a sketch. Like you're at the fair. You know when they make those sketches? 
and you look crazy, you got a big old head, fat gut. Or sometimes you can get a sketch that actually looks like you, right? So back then they didn't have AI where you can create a human being that looks and sounds exactly like them. And now every time you go on the internet or turn on the television, you have no idea who that person is. That's how sick it is. AI is taking over the planet. You have no idea who that person is. They sound and look exactly like them. Right? It's happening right in front of our eyes. You can't trust anything. In another year or so, you won't be able to trust anything you see on TV. You won't be able to trust anything you hear. You'll swear it's so-and-so talking on the radio, talking on TV, and it's not them. It's a program, and it looks exactly like them. It sounds like them. We're living in a sick world. Hope we don't get canceled. Do not be sketch. See, they only had sketches back then. We, we have deep fakes and so on. But what he's saying is, don't act like these sinners. See, here's a sketch of a sinner. Here's a sketch of you. Do not be conformed, sketched like this age I own, but be transformed. Metamorpho means to morph your mind into the mind of Christ. If you don't, you have no chance for a ministry. You have no chance to be delivered from demons. You have no chance to be healed. Zero. Nothing. 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 You have no chance of anything. Nothing. You're screwed. I'm sorry, that's Latin. Let's go forward here. <laughs> Metamorpho, to morph like a caterpillar, morphs into a butterfly. Right? Morph your mind into the mind of Christ. How do you do that? You use your own free will. You use the word of God. You make sacrifices. <gasps> My God, give me that knife. Oh! Renewing of your mind so that you may what? Nakamazo. Test everything that comes to you. You walk up to me. Hey, Brother Mike. Yeah. God told me you're going to be going to heaven next week. Got to test it. God told me you're supposed to go to Egypt and minister to Arabs. Oh, let me test that. God said you're supposed to be wearing this gorgeous outfit tonight. I tested that. Look at this. Kill it. <laughs> this thing's killing it. But you've got to test, test everything to determine the truth. What is God's good and perfect will for you? Okay, just doesn't flash there. No, that's it. No, you got to test it. Okay? This is why charismatics and prophetics end up screwing their lives up, right? They saw a vision. Oh, wow. That's your vision. Okay, you can't take that vision. That has to be tested. I had a dream. Brother Mike, I had a dream. Oh my God, I couldn't believe it. There were butterflies all around me. What does that mean, Brother Mike? Oh, it means I'm going to heaven, huh? No, doofus. That has to be tested. You don't accept any dream from anybody. That's how you get yourself in trouble. That's Hebrew. You want God's good will, his acceptable will, his perfect will. That's what you're looking for. Well, you can't get it. You have to test it. Brother Mike, I'm so glad you showed up tonight. God gave me a word for you. But, okay, I'll take the word and then I'll test it. See, you don't just accept the word, somebody. That's how you get in trouble. I mean, last year I was teaching, and I said, you know, that I had a, this, I had a giant IQ. You know? And a couple of people believed it. <laughs> Nobody tested it. You know, somebody should have come up to me and said, hey, 
Can you spell cat? I'll spot you the C and the A. Mm. Cat. You think about that. You test everything by God's word. You test it by your conscience. You test it by your discernment. You don't just accept something somebody says to you. Thus saith the Lord. Even if you respect them, even if they appear to be legitimate preachers, you do not accept anything. You got to test it. I come out to them. Yeah. All right, let's go over these puppies. <clears throat> I mentioned this uh, a couple weeks ago. These are Satan's billy clubs. He uses fear to beat people into the ground, Christians, and make them do or not do what he doesn't want you to do. Fear is one of the worst things you can happen. Here in Job chapter 4, I'll write this down in your deliverance manual. One of Job's friends has sleep paralysis here. What is that? 30, 3,500 years ago? 3,400? When was Job written? Over 3,000 years ago. The demons are using the same crap, and they never change. <clears throat> I've learned spirits are creatures of habit. If they do something and they get away with it, they'll do it again. And if they get away with it, they do it again. They've got an incredulous amount of patience, and they just keep doing it over and over. I don't know how they do it. If I do something too much, I get bored with it. You know, I want to do something different. They don't seem to have that. If this scares you, they'll keep scaring you that way for 50 years. Absolutely amazing. They won't stop. Yeah? I've had hundreds of people come to me and ask why they can't get delivered. And one of the main reasons is demons don't like to pay for stuff. They're shoplifters. And if they have to pay for stuff, they'll change. Okay? So what they do is they put a negative thought in your mind. They send you some idiot to talk to you. They attack you in some way. And if you don't do anything about it, they will then do that again. See? The idiot at work that drives you nuts is being sent over to you by spirits to aggravate you. Well, if you let them get away with that, they'll do that again. That person will move into your apartment. <laughs> if demons have to pay for something, they'll stop it. Right? They'll stop doing it. Christians don't make them pay for anything. They get attacked, and they don't start praising. They don't start quoting the scripture. They don't, they don't do anything the demons don't like. They just take it. What happens after a while? They pound self-pity into your soul. Oh, God, I had another bad dream. You had a bad dream? What would you do about it? Well, I just prayed and asked not to have another one. Nah. Okay, stupid. That prayer is not going to work. you got to fight back. It's spiritual warfare. you got to make them pay. You gave me a lust dream last night? That did it. That did it. You're going to do that again? Yeah, you're going to get this. Thank you, Jesus. You're going to get this. Oh, you gave me another bad dream? Scared? You, you attacked my kid, did you? Okay. You shouldn't have done that. See, these gutless Christians are worthless. As, you can't believe how worthless Christians are. They're so gutless. Why? Fear spirits. Fear spirits make you hesitate. They make you to question yourself. They make you doubt. Okay? So the demon doesn't have to pay. So they'll do it again. They always do it again. Will they have mercy on me? Will they finally stop? What are you, stupid? Yeah, they'll stop after you're dead. Okay? Then they'll go to somebody else in your family and start pounding them into the ground. Unless they have to pay for it. 
Demons are freeloaders. They don't want to pay for nothing. They just want to kick your face in and uh, relax. No. You make them pay. What'd you do? Okay. Now listen to this. Pull out your Bible and start reading it out loud. Hey, how do you like that one? Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. How do you like that? My God shall supply all my needs. You like that one? Did you? Like, yeah, do it again, and you're going to get more of that. Does this make any sense? I got to be helping somebody. If you don't fight back, they take it as a sign that you've got a yellow streak down your back, and you like it. Well, you're a child of God. You're not supposed to like anything they do. Nothing. You just sit around and take it? What are you, a heavy bag? When I was boxing in eighth grade, I worked out on the heavy bag. Boom, boom. What are you, a heavy bag? That's what they think you are. A heavy bag. Stupid. No. Not after tonight. Yeah. You know what you're going to do? Learn Holy Ghost checkers. Demon makes a move, then you make a move. He moves, you move. What do Christians do? They let him run the board. Here, screw you. Here, suck on that. There you go. Fall over there. Here, kiss my... Hey, I'm not kissing you anymore. I'm making you pay. You want to take a shot at me? You're going to pay for it. Oh, I got a urge for drugs. Oh, my God. It's what? Oh, you're going to pay for that. Give me that urge for drug again. Oh, gosh, I'm addicted to food. I need a pie. Oh, you, you gave me an urge for a pie? You're going to pay for that. You want a pie in the face? If you don't make them pay, they will come back and do it again. And they will not stop till you're dead. You make them pay, they'll stop it. They don't like it. They don't like to have to pay for anything. Okay. Uh, this guy is talking about sleep paralysis. You can probably relate to it. I'm not going to spend any time on this. But it's a fear spirit. These fear spirits attack you at night. They paralyze you in bed. And that's what they are. They're trying to get you to develop anxiety. Okay? So you get attacked at night in bed. Okay, I told you not to do that. It's praise time. I'm getting out of my bed. You woke me up. Now you're going to pay for it. I'm going to make you listen. Thank you, Jesus. How do you like that one? Well, glory. You like that one? Yeah, don't attack me in bed at night anymore. If you don't do anything, you get to live your same miserable life. Welcome to doomsday. If you fight back, demons will stop it. If you resist the devil, he will. Hmm. Oop. That guy's an idiot over there. Oop. You hate that guy. Oop. They don't like you. Oh, you're putting thoughts in my mind? Okay. I'm going to give you some thoughts. There you go. There you go. I'm going to read this. I'm going to read it out loud so you can hear me. Hey, if you won't fight back, they take it as a sign. You're either a coward or you like it. Who wouldn't? Then it's talking about this demon hitting him in bed. His, he gets hair on his neck, the usual stuff. It's all fear, fear spirits. Uh, I saw, saw a shadow figure in the room that 3,500 years ago, they're doing the same crap over and over. Okay? Second Timothy, God has not given us a spirit of delia, but of dunamis and agape and 
Sophronismus. What's that say? Yeah, we went over this. I've gone over this numerous times. Fear is cowardice. Okay, that's what that should have been translated as cowardice, Delia. That's why you're not fighting back because you've got a coward spirit. That's why you won't make sacrifices because you got a coward spirit. It ain't gonna work anyway. I don't know. I tried it once before, it didn't work out. So that's a coward demon. You you're you're gutless. People who won't fight back have coward spirits. They're weak. Jeremiah had a coward spirit. Jeremiah, I'm calling you to the nations. What? Me? Who, who am I? I don't. My family's nuts. I got nothing. I, kept, I grew up in this stinking neighborhood. What was he doing there? He was saying, I'm afraid I'm going to be rejected because I'm a nothing and a nobody. And Jehovah said to him, don't say you're a nothing and a nobody. I got your back. What was he trying to do? Get fear out of the great prophet Jeremiah and it worked He became a monster for God See that nobody <clears throat> All right, well you Made a mistake coming here tonight you should have gone to Jehovah witnesses Look at what it says here you don't have a spirit of cowardice do you no you got dunamis, supernatural power. You got agape, unconditional love. You got a sound, stable mind that works like the mind of Christ. Sophonisma. You think straight. When you were a sinner, you thought like an idiot. You got the Holy Ghost now. You're supposed to be changing. You're supposed to be sacrificing. Oh. God, Brother Mike. Okay, now these two demons always work together. They're kissing cousins. Here they are. Phobos, fear demons. Dalia, coward spirits. Remember, we went over this before. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, but the fear demon gives you the initial shock. Here it is. And the, the coward spirit keeps you from going for help. Okay. They're like bullies. They're like bullies, right? The fear demon bashes you in the face. And the coward demon goes, oh, well, I guess I'll take it. The coward's the one that keeps you from seeking help, fixing it, fighting back. He's the one that, ugh, ugh. Let's get out of here. All right, let's go over these real quickly. Second Corinthians chapter four. This is what, uh, as I mentioned several times before, is the verse that opened my eyes years ago. I think I read this in the late 90s or something. If our gospel is hid, Paul said, it is hid to those who are, follow me, lost. Now that's a Greek word there. That's kind of mistranslated. That's a uh, present continuous verb. It means in the process of being lost. So if you if you're not understanding something or something about the Gospels not coming in clear It doesn't mean you're lost He's talking about generalized situation where the person's in the process of being lost it Doesn't mean you're lost right now Is the way that re reads in the Greek Present continuous tense verb follow me in whom the God of this age Who's the God of this age? Right, Satan, he has blinded the minds of those who do not believe. And here's what God revealed to me years ago. Not is not mind, it's thoughts. And those who do not believe 
can be Christians. Yeah, that left me stunned. There's two types of unbelievers. There's sinners who don't believe by nature. And then there's Christian unbelievers who don't believe the full gospel. Okay? So some Christians don't believe in healing, deliverance, on and on it goes. They're Christian unbelievers. Correct? Yeah, they don't believe in the full gospel. They've picked, they've cherry-picked the thing, and now they've got their version of it. They're good. It's all good. What's causing that? Demonic thoughts. The demons are putting thoughts in their mind. Healing's not for today. Or some other false doctrine. It's caused by thoughts. Have you ever met an unbelieving Christian? Who hasn't? Uh, they're all over the place. They're like bees. What's wrong with them? The thought the demon put in their mind causes them to doubt. And when you doubt, what happens to your blessings? Doubt can be a stronghold and then some. What's doubt based on? Unbelieving Christians who have not renewed their mind live in doubt, unbelief, fear, questioning, confusion. What's going on here? It's all done up here. Boom. Everybody here knows all about it, right? Particularly if you're a parent. <clears throat> You told this kid five times not to do that. They're having other thoughts. My mother's a permissive parent. She's not going to really do anything. She's just yelling. Can I get healed? What was that statement? That was a question of doubt. They were asking, is it possible to get healed? Or it must be possible, but also not possible. Correct? What's the number one demon doubt word? If. If. As soon as you see if in a sentence, wow, start panicking. What I learned over the year is, years is they always, almost always use negative thoughts, which God never uses. Would you like to have some discernment tonight? All right, I'll just impart it to you. I'll pretend I'm a prophetic. Got it? If you have a negative thought in your mind, that thought's not from God. You can track them so easy. Everybody knows what a negative thought is. You suck. That would be a negative thought, correct? Everybody knows about negative thoughts. Uh, they, you've all had Thanksgiving with your relatives. Uh, they're sitting around the table eating, and you're sitting there going, oh, my God, these people are crazy. I got to get out of here. Why? 
you just sit and listen to everybody's thought pattern. And almost every one of them is something negative. There isn't any possible way to get healed or delivered if you are entertaining negative thoughts in your mind. It's not possible. Jesus shows up in Nazareth. He can't wait to get home. He's got all his friends there. He's going to hold a massive healing rally. It's going to be unbelievable. He gets there and nobody wants to see him. Why? They had a bunch of negative thoughts about him. How do you know all these things about the scripture? Well, you, you're, you're, you worked over there putting the dishwashers together. Who are you? What are you doing here? Where'd you? How come all these people are following you? We followed you when you, we needed something fixed. Other than that, we were good with you. They all had negative thoughts about him. What happened? Nobody got healed. Negative thoughts block every blessing you could ever dream of receiving from God. Someone who has negative thoughts that are chronically, chronic negative thoughts, proves they have not renewed their mind. That's the problem with that person. They haven't renewed their mind. Because nobody with a renewed mind sits around thinking about negative thoughts. Am I preaching it straight to you? Your thoughts determine your entire life, don't they? At least 90% of it or something. What you think is usually what happens. Wigglesworth used to have a hot temper. He'd get mad. He'd start yelling. Okay, until he renewed his mind. And then he was a completely different person. Remember that story? The wife brings the husband to the healing meeting in an ambulance, pulls up outside. They bring him in on a gurney. She's panicking. She's afraid. She's crying. What's going on there? The wife's Mind is being flooded with demonic negative thoughts. She, uh, she says to Wigglesworth, be careful with him. He's dying. He's supposed to die. He's, you know, what are they doing there? Those are chronic negative thoughts consuming the guy's wife. Wigglesworth, who used to have negative thoughts years ago and renewed his mind, decided to pray for the guy and put his hand here. Boom! Whack the guy. She starts screaming, screaming bloody murder. She's screaming in the auditorium. Everybody's freaking. What's going on there? Fear demons shoot mass negative thoughts into people's minds, causing panic. They rush him out of the stadium or the other auditorium. They run to the hospital. He sits up in the gurney. How you doing? Wigglesworth had no negative thoughts about that man being healed. Do you see that? He had replaced his negative thoughts with God's word. The, the wife was panicking. Fear, anxiety disorders, and panics are all rooted in negative thought patterns. Poverty is rooted in negative thought You ever met a drug addict? You haven't? Well, I've met all kinds of them. What's, what's, a pro, what's one of the main problems with it? Chronic negative thoughts. This will make it feel better. Thoughts. So. 100% of all relapses were related to what? It's relapse.
I know you know what I'm saying because almost everybody here is able to think. Those of you who are not, we'll pray for you later, but most of you can think. Okay, if you have a thought in your head, there's only three sources for that thought, right? The Holy Ghost, a demon, or you. Somebody put that thought in your mind. It just it doesn't plop in there from quadrant seven in universe six. Because <laughs> somebody put that thought in there. You either put it in there, or a demon put it in there, or God did. What's the rule out on it? Let's rule it out. Since God never uses negative thoughts, that means we're down to two possibilities. Two possibilities. You got a mirror in your pocket? Pull it out. It's either you or him. This thought from the demon has no effect on you at all because you renewed your mind and you don't live by negative thoughts anymore. You put that stronghold down and you burn it. What I just shared with you was essence, the depth of mental illness. People who are mentally ill have negative thoughts on steroids. It's like speed bag of negative thoughts. That's the difference between you and them. Is the racing thoughts that come in. Uncontrolled racing thoughts. Uncontrolled delusions of grandeur. I just explained every failed Christian on the planet Earth to you. That's what I just gave you. I just handed you all of them. Every one of them. Millions. I just put it right in your lap. What's the problem? Negative thoughts. Well, how do I beat negative thoughts, Brother Mike? I guess I better start quoting the Bible. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's not going to work. Why? Why doesn't quoting the Bible work? Okay? Because you cannot serve two masters. You can't have a Bible thought and a negative thought in your mind. One of the two has got to go. Well, I read the Bible and I quote scripture, brother Mike. You do? Well, how come your life's so jacked up? I don't know. I do. You can't serve one master and then serve the other. You cannot serve two masters. Jesus said you must hate one of them. God is glorious. Hallelujah. God loves me. Oh, gosh, I don't think I can get out of this. Oh, geez, can somebody help me? Oh, my God, I'm, nobody cares. You cannot have both together. The negative thought cancels out the Scripture. Because the negative thought proves you don't believe the Scripture. If you did believe the Scripture, the negative thought would fall. Welcome to Holy Ghost Psychology 101 tonight. Everything's controlled by your free will and your mind. <laughs> okay. You do not want to be a Christian unbeliever. Everything the Bible says, you believe. 
two types of unbelievers went over that Christians and sinners I used to teach at a rehab center uh, over on 12th Street, 12th Street near Indian School, over there, right? See the see the bearings there? Yeah, like an Indian guy. Uh, and I would I would teach over the guys over there. It was a men's facility. Uh, Streets of Joy was the name of it. Anybody heard of that? It's not around anymore, but anyway years ago. I used to go over there every week and You know I Would have an altar call at the end of the teaching <clears throat> and I I never got more than let's say three four Guys come up, but once they came up. I would dismiss the class They would all go back to the rooms and then I'd work with these people. I would work with whatever I got I'm going over deliverance one day over the streets of joy and two two of the guys said What are you crazy Christians can't have demons now these, these are mind you these are addicts Addicts are telling me Christians can't have demons <laughs> You believe that it's like telling somebody the moon isn't made out of cheese It's stupid One guy pipes up and he says, I need to ask you a question. That's why I'm here. He said, I lost everything to cocaine. I said, I had a career, I had a home, I had kids, I had a wife, I used to have a nice car. This guy went on and on. Everybody's listening to him, like everybody's quiet. I'm quiet. I lost this that and everything's gone What caused me to do that? How could cocaine do that to me? Why did I do that? I said, Dude you just you just answered my You've got spirits you're infected with spirits who are taking over your mind and drove you into Drugs and poverty and everything else in this horrible world What was I fighting there Christian unbelievers You know they'd all turned their life over to Christ. They all wanted to recover from addictions, but they didn't believe in the ministry of deliverance that Jesus Demonstrated in the four Gospels and Acts. They didn't believe it. Not everybody did. Some of them came up. Okay. Again, it's in your mind. It's your mind. Lest the light of the glorious Gospel of Christ, that's what you're looking for. You want the glorious Gospel. Oengelion is glorious good news. You want the Gospel, that means good news, to shine to you. That's what you're looking for. That's why you came here tonight. You're looking for the Holy Ghost to shine down on you. Yeah. I'll let you in on a secret. Help is on the way tonight. Yeah. That's the secret I thought I'd share with you. All right, let's look at the team. It's a gang. It's a gang. They're gangsters. Here's the three gangsters. You'll be running into these for the rest of your ministry. They work in teams. They work together. They're partners. See, they're not like Christians. Christians won't work together. You get your Baptists, Lutherans, Episcopals, Methodists. They don't have anything to do with them. They don't have anything to do with them. Christians don't work together. They work separately. Demons are not that stupid. This demon has this knowledge, experience, and power. This one has that. This one goes, hey, I got what you don't. I got what you don't. Let's team up on this stinking Baptist That's how they win It's a three-headed monster fear cowardice and lies 
fear, cowardice, and lies. You'll always see those three spirits working together. They're partners in crime. They're like dragons. What's going on here? Your mind is the seat of your free will and your intelligence. It's right up here. It's in your brain. Okay? Your mind is in your brain. <clears throat> your soul is where your emotions come out of. Love, passion, joy, happiness, laughter, Whatever it is, uh, loneliness, sadness, abandonment. Oh, oh, it hurts. My soul hurts. Souls hurt. You can feel hurt in there. You can feel it. If it's severe, you can actually feel your stomach tighten, and your mouth gets a little tight. It's, anybody ever had a panic attack? Your body runs through a set rhythm. Boom, 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 boom. There it is. You're sweating down your crack. <laughs> your mouth is tightening up. Your guts are clammy. Feet, you know, shortness of breath. I, oh, God, is that asthma back? Another negative thought. Hello? It's a domino system. Who are the three? Domino pushers. I just showed them to you this dragon of fear and cowardice and lies manipulates and controls people In the entire human planet is controlled by these spirits Why do people get divorced? Three-headed dragon. There he is. Lies. Fear. Cowardice. Your son's a drug addict. You've been trying to get him to go get treatment forever. What's wrong with him? Lies and fear. Cowardice. I'm not ready to go in. Why aren't they ready? They're busy working. No, no, they're afraid Scared How does this system work it's so simple yet it's so complicated Here comes a neg negative thought. No one likes you. Boop, it comes into your mind Then if you receive that thought as truth the demons then switch gears and bang they attack your soul and you start getting negative emotions over that thought. No one likes me. Oh my god. I'm gonna get rejected So the negative emotion makes the thought real when in fact it's a lie What are we looking at here you're a fish on a thing they're, they're dragging you around using negative thoughts and now negative emotions. Okay, so when I first started doing deliverance ministry, I used, people used to criticize me. And they said I did a bad job and they didn't like what I said and uh, they didn't want to hear that and so on. They're all different things. And they used to bother me. Years ago, I used to go to the Lord at night. Lord, I, man, I'm beat, Lord. Lord, I'm sorry I hurt that person today. I'm sorry I didn't do that. I, and I spend the first half half an hour of my prayer time apologizing for everything. And then I realized what was happening. The demons were tricking me. They were putting negative thoughts about what I was doing in my mind. And then I started going on a little guilt trip. And then I started having some pity party. Maybe I am a screw up. Maybe I'm not a good counselor. I started doubt myself. 
A couple weeks later, I got over that. Now, if somebody comes up to me now and says, you are a biggest piece of human crap I've ever seen. Didn't even feel it. Didn't feel it. Because I learned what the demons were doing to me. I knew what they were trying to do. Run me down. Make me afraid. Give me fear. Now I'm almost uninsultable. <laughs> Can you imagine that? There's only like eight people in the United States that are uninsultable, and I'm one of them. So there's seven other guys out there. I don't know who they are. But anyway, what the devil's doing there is fishing with thoughts. You bite on that thought, and he pulls your soul. Oh, no. Fear. Sports is exactly the same. On your basketball team, when there's two seconds left on the clock, there's only one or two people on that team willing to take that shot. The rest of them want to pass it to you. Why? Fear of failure. Fear of being criticized. Fear of looking like an idiot. Fear, 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 fear. So I'm a coward, 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 I'll pass it. Am I helping anybody? This works in every phase of our society. Every area. These three-headed monsters attack. Fear and lies. So if you say something negative to me, boy, Brother Mike, you're a rotten teacher. If I don't receive that thought, I don't have any negative emotions following it. So I don't have that panic or guilt anymore. I got over it. See that? If the thought doesn't register, the fear never manifests. And you become indestructible. They said to Paul, good God, man, you can't go to Rome. Don't do it. They said that to somebody who had already renewed his mind and had no fear. Am I helping anybody? Give this thought to her. Yeah, oh, my husband's on porn. He, he doesn't want me anymore. Oh, that doesn't feel good. Oh, I feel abandoned. I don't. If you catch the thought, the emotion never manifests. And you are never hurt. I just gave you the essence of mental illness. Only the thoughts come in at steroid speed. And the negative emotions, oh, bipolar, oh, up, <laughs> oh, no. The demons are simply manipulating their emotions. How? If you can control your thought life, the devil is finished. It's over for you. Hey, Jesus. How you doing, buddy? Why don't you jump off this tower here? Do a couple backflips and land down there. Guess what? Your guardian angel will be right down there. He'll save you. Thought coming in. Word coming out. Thou shalt not. Tempt the Lord thy God. The devil tried to put a thought in his mind, but the thought was caught. Victory. 
Every human being is exactly the same as Jesus. He tried to dump thoughts in his brain like a trash can. He rejected every one of the thoughts and fulfilled his destiny. What was his destiny? You are his destiny. You got a demon. That's how come you cast out demon. Thought coming in, incoming. Pop. I don't have a demon. I honor my father, and you dishonor me. Got it. Got it. I just gave you the essence of mental illness. Mentally ill people can't catch the thoughts. Christians who have not renewed their mind can't catch the thoughts. They're doomed to repeat failure over and over and over again. Bill, how you doing? Saw you five, five years ago. Over the, how you been? I don't know, man. Things are, You mean to tell me I saw you seven years ago? It's the same thing? Yeah? Wow. Your name's Bill. I apologize. But Bill, hey, Bill. Bill, you know what you are? What? A typical born-again Christian. Seven years later, still doing the same crap. Why? Thought? Emotion. Failure. Three-headed monster. Fear, cowardice, and lies. You overcome that, and you become a Wigglesworth. You become a Sister Etter. Right? But God can't use somebody who listens to demonic thoughts. He can't use them because he can't trust them. Is that, is that making any sense at all? The Holy Ghost uses people who think like he does. Think about what thought? What kind of thoughts? Are these Holy Ghost thoughts? Are these thoughts... God only knows where they come from. You renew your mind in 2024, you're going to be a monster for God. You don't change your mind, I'm sorry, you're screwed. Yeah, I keep using Latin, but that's what's going to happen to you. You're done. You don't change your mind. And renew your thoughts. You die a failure. You die mentally ill. You die a drug addict. Your kids never get healed. They're on drugs. Everybody dying. Why? Negative thoughts. Okay. I guess I won't. Maybe I went over that too much. I apologize. This illustrates, I won't spend any time on this then. You know, the thoughts come in. See those types of thoughts? They come into the brain. There they are. First the thought comes in. Then what? All the thoughts come into the person's brain. Delusions, lies. Injustice is a huge one. Everybody's so crazy about injustice. How dare you treat me that way? How dare you talk to me that way? Oh my God, I can't believe you did it. You ever heard that? <laughs> you know who the biggest injustice is on planet Earth? You. You know where you should be right now? Dead and in hell. But you didn't get justice. You deserve to die. You got mercy. You didn't get justice. Thank God you didn't get justice. You wouldn't be here tonight listening to this wonderful teaching and amazed at this outfit. You'd be gone, screaming in hell, and no one would ever come to help you. Injustice. Well, I deserve, I, I, hey, no, you don't deserve anything. You know what you got? You got mercy. You didn't get what you deserved. I need justice. Somebody needs to make it up to me. My God, that's horrible. No, what's horrible is you. 
You don't understand the big picture. You got mercy from God. You didn't get justice. I don't want justice. I can't afford it. Well, somebody owes me. Nobody owes you. You're supposed to be in hell right now. You know what knocked at your door? Love knocked on your door. Hey, you in there? Total loser? Come out here. I got love for you. You don't get justice. I'm going to protest. Instead of protesting, why don't you take those thoughts captive in your mind, stop having emotional problems, and stand forth and deliver in the liberty Christ set you free. Why don't you do that instead? It's getting a little too deep for this section, but these guys are getting it. This one and that one. Here they come. It's bombarding into the mind. There it is at the Dream Center. I'll be there Tuesday teaching at the Dream Center. The entire building loaded with avalanches of negative thoughts. Ninety-nine percent of the speakers at the Dream Center, they all come in and give them an encouraging message. God loves you. God cares about you. God's going to help you. God's going to do this. God did that. I come in there and kick their faces in. <laughs> I'm not joking. I was just up at the QT right up here at Grand and uh, Bethany Home. You ever been to that QT? It's pretty nice, isn't it? I love QTs, aren't they? QTs are the best stores in town, aren't they? Oh, man, they're like heaven. You walk in there, everything's there. This is fantastic. Four guys come walking up to me from the Dream Center up here. Hey, that's Brother Mike over there. What was I doing? Something great, getting a drink. It's fantastic. You get a drink at QT? It makes you happy, doesn't it? Yeah. You you kind of feel, oh, wow, I feel anointed. Things pushes, shh. you feel like you have power, filling. You done that, QT? Oh, man, I tell you what, I love, I love it over there. The guy walks up to me, one of the four guys. He says, I was just talking to you, talking about you to my... Uh, Oh, man, I just lost it. But I was talking to, talking about you to my friend or my mother or something like that. And I go, uh-oh. You know, your first thought was I had a negative thought pop in my mind. I'm in trouble. He goes, you're the, you're the only person that comes here and tells it like it is. That's what the guy said to me. You ble Now, I know I'm not, but, I mean, that was his impression. That was his impression of it. I told him all about you. And then I got scared again. <laughs> I said, well, good seeing you. I bolted for the counter. I had to get away. I had to get away from the Dream Center guys. <clears throat> Here's how it works. There's an avalanche of negative thoughts designed to steal your destiny, your hope, your healing, your deliverance. And if you keep those thoughts, they become your thoughts. And then you end up sick, dead, lost, and a loser. First, they attack the mind. Then, if you receive the thought, they put another thought in. If you receive that one, they put another thought in. Pretty soon, when you're mentally ill, the thoughts are coming in so fast, you can't keep track of them. Hello? Look, this guy that's got schizophrenia wasn't born with schizophrenia. The demons built that stronghold in their mind. It was... Years of building this stronghold in their mind of chronic negative thoughts that the person kept receiving. Then the demons sweeten the pot with child abuse and drugs and witchcraft. And then one day, they're about 21 years old, 19, 22, they hear a thought in their mind. Somebody's talking to them. It's as clear as I'm speaking to you. It's in the mind. Over a period of years, listening to spirits, 
finally let in the schizophrenia demon. Now hell has really come to breakfast. The monster got in. But he couldn't have got in if the other spirits hadn't prepped him. See? They start out here, 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 here. Boom. And those things are harder than heck to get out. They don't just come out. Now we're leaving. No, they don't, they don't take that. The person has to go through major repentance. Get rid of a schizophrenia demon. It's a living hell for these poor people. But it's helter-skelter is what it is. Now your thoughts are running away from you. Intrusive thoughts, what do they sound like? Here's the normal stuff. They treat almost everybody the same. Not, not everybody, but almost. They get you to criticize yourself. They make unreasonable demands. They have you asking all kinds of questions, causing doubt. What if this? What if that? How did that work? How does this work? What happens then? The soul gets hit, and then suddenly, oh, the anxiety starts. Oh, the loneliness starts. Ugh, I feel overwhelmed. The fatigue sets in. The insomnia sets in. See that? Chronic fatigue syndrome. What started that? It started back here. Chronic negative thoughts ran to chronic fatigue syndrome. You don't just wake up on Tuesday. Oh, my God, it's chronic fatigue syndrome. I, I got to go to sleep. I got to take a nap. No, fool. You were prepped by the kingdom of darkness to end up with chronic fatigue syndrome. They trained you to get it. What's phase two? The negative emotions. If you have a negative emotion, it means to you the thought is real. You're going to get hurt. I'm going to get hurt. Run. See that? Look, uh, demons don't put thoughts in your head like butterflies. <laughs> I, got, I got a butterfly in my head. Okay, that's not going to cause any terror or fear, is it? Butterflies are not that dangerous, are they? Yeah. A thought of everybody is going to reject you, nobody likes you, God's not going to answer your prayers. And, those thoughts there. Wait a minute here. Wow, is that true? Is that? I wonder if that's true. I've, well, so, as soon as you started to wonder that, the demons heard you and saw you, and they said, "Hey, this this fool's ready for another one." They throw in another negative thought. You see that? If you'd have captured the thought right when it came in, you would have never had any negative emotions. There would have never been a divorce. Because you wouldn't have gotten all these negative thoughts about your husband, right? Anybody here got a husband? They're all the same. They're messy. They're messy. They don't, they're not attentive. You know, they're screwing stuff up. They forgot stuff. They're, they're, well, if you, if you keep receiving negative thoughts about your husband, he's a screw up, he doesn't like this, this is what he did in the past, 15 years ago he did this. If you keep receiving those negative thoughts, what's going to happen? You're going to start feel, feeling negative emotions toward your spouse, which leads to a divorce. Listen, in divorce court, you ever been in divorce court? <laughs> I used to be an expert witness years ago, and I used to testify on divorce cases where the judges want to know the earning capacity of one of the spouses. Back then, I was working as a rehabilitation counselor, so I'd, I had some familiarity with the labor market. Well, I, would, I would go to these, these hearings. Of course, I was getting paid big bucks. That was the only time I liked a divorce. Yeah, I, didn't want any, I didn't like any of my divorces. <laughs> I would go there, and you wouldn't believe it. There was very little 
conversations going on between the two attorneys, the judges, the, the two spouses that were positive and complimentary. Wow, how do you know that, Mike? Yeah, almost every statement at the divorce trial was something negative. It was a sea of negativity. He did this, he did that, she did this, she did that. How'd that start? Years ago, blink, hey, your husband's feet stink. Hmm. Yeah, they do stink. The, he should have worked overtime this week. He, he came home to watch the game. Oh, God, that's, we lost. They plant a little thought in your mind. That's negative about that person, pastor, minister, spouse, kid, whatever it is. And if you keep that thought, that thought then becomes real to you. And then you have fear, cowardice, panic. Oh, no. See that? When you go to divorce court, hey, there's a reason this spouse cheated on that spouse. What was it? I don't know. But I know it was negative thoughts, lustful thoughts, lies pumped into the person's mind. Then they acted on the thought, ended up in divorce court. Hello? People are. Nobody goes to divorce court, nobody goes to jail who lives their lives in a bubble of positive thinking. Nobody. <laughs> I mean, this is pretty easy to get, isn't it? The reason your spouse or your family members are jacked up is because they have negative thoughts. I should have married this person. Oh, we shouldn't, I shouldn't have quit that job. I should have taken that job. I should have, I would have, I could have. And while the person is chronically filtering through these negative thoughts, God's destiny for them just drifts out the window. You cannot fulfill your destiny with negative thoughts generating negative emotions. It's not possible. You can't make it. You're not going to make it. Changes have to be made. Quickly. This is the process I'm showing you that Satan uses to manipulate and control Christians. They teach them by negative thoughts, to be hard on themselves. They beat themselves up. They have regrets. They have self-pity. And they use themselves as a punching bag. If you have these negative thoughts in your mind, you can never fulfill your destiny. You will never have your anointing. You will never get delivered or healed. It will never happen. It has to be overcome. You must be an overcomer. Mind. Guess who's here tonight to help you? Yeah. The Holy Ghost knows all about it. And he never has a negative thought. You know who about? You. Never. Does he like everything you do and say? Oh, of course he doesn't. I'm talking about you as a person. Not what you said or did, but you as a person. No negative thoughts from God. Not even a one. Not a one. There's no reason or room for self-condemnation. This is not part of your life anymore. Because there's no need to do it. And then these other emotions start to hit you. and you, I mean, it's scary. 
these all come out of the soul that started out listening to negative thoughts and they gave them negative emotions and emotions hurt and they cause pain. As you continue to beat yourself up, you will be living in a sea of shame and guilt. And then, at some point in time, terror will take over. You can't sleep anymore. You're on all kinds of medications. You got two or three diagnoses from the psychiatrist. One or two from the psychologist. And your life is heading where? To the garbage pit. And then you'll start developing as you get older this these fears the devil's got fears for every season of your life None of them have to be listened to by you because you got the Holy Ghost And there's final goal I guess we'll stop there The final goal of Satan is what to turn your life into a dog and pony show Here's how he does it Jump up there jump down there Sit over here. Drop your drawers over here. Eat that. Smoke that. Take that. Do that. Go on. There you go. Get on the whole pony. Dance around up there. There you go. Moon the crowd. Boop. There you go. Go get some smoke. Oh, pot. Can you imagine it? The whole country being taken over by pot and gambling. America is going straight to hell in a handbasket. Nothing can stop it now. A dog and pony show. That's what your life is. How long you been saved? I've been saved for 15 years. How come you're still in bondage? What's going on here? Something wrong. There's something wrong. What's wrong? Hmm? Hmm. You can be paralyzed by fear. You know how the demons do it? When you receive this thought over and over again, you start to develop dread. Dread is a form of terror. Oh my God, I can't. Is that going to happen to me? What? Oh no. Didn't start out that way. Started at this thought, maybe that one. Did they take that one? Okay, give him that one. Oh, he took that one? Okay, let's give him this one. And pretty soon, you get used to it. You got the thought comes in, oh, my parents don't love me. Oh, I can't, I can't pray. I, I don't get my answers. To, and pretty soon they start stacking negative thoughts in your mind. Your faith goes, doubt rises. Unbelief skyrockets. Why? You didn't renew your mind. You don't believe what God told you. They made you question it. They're questioning it. You'll never be free. You're not going to get healed. Not no. These demons will. No, not anymore. You're going to make them pay. You know the difference between a negative thought and a positive one, right? Hello? Oh, that's a pretty hat. That jacket stinks. <laughs> now, listen, the first thought would have been... <laughs> See how easily you caught that? Well, what about this thought? God doesn't love me. That's a negative thought, isn't it? Okay. Why do people not pray? They, they think God's not hearing them. Why do they think he's not hearing them? They told him he wasn't hearing them. He don't hear you. Who are the worst people? Well, it's your relatives and your family. Because they're so used to you 
they feel a liberty to say anything to you they feel comes to their mind. Anything. They don't have a filter because you're your family. Families are the worst trigger you can ever imagine of Christians getting negative thoughts and negative emotions. I'll close with this. That's a lie. Uh, <laughs> when I first got married years ago, I'd had several marriages, but this last one, the Christian marriage, uh, I married a school teacher. And uh, she was very good at school teaching, super teacher, uh, teacher of the year, all that stuff. 25 years, been a teacher. Well, uh, that was 20 some years ago when I did that, but the first year or so, she got on my nerves because uh, she was always talking to me like I was a sixth grader. And then God opened my eyes, and I saw that, you know, for, for all these years, she had taught sixth graders. So she, her mind had been patterned after getting a sixth grader to do something they don't want to do. <laughs> and so this pattern of her mind filtered into the marriage. And so now I'm the sixth grader, okay? So years ago, I wasn't in the mood to be talked to like a sixth grader. Did you do this? Did you fix that? Did you pick that up? Are you wearing that? Give me the hat. I thought, listen, I don't, you know, I'm a grown man. I'm going to be talked to like I'm a sixth grader. You're older than me, aren't you, sir? I'm old. You don't like people talking to you like you're a sixth grader, do you? No, you won't answer? German, this guy. <laughs> and then God showed me, hey, what are you doing, Mike? You're only hurting yourself. She didn't mean anything by that. And so by supernatural Holy Ghost power, I turned into a sixth grader. <laughs> yes! Yes. Now, when I go home tonight, she'll, she'll tell me what to do. <laughs> and I walk in the door and I say, honey, what do I need to do? I, I circumvent her. <laughs> I get her. Don't you get it? See, you can choose what thoughts stay in your mind. And you can choose your emotions, how you react to those thoughts. Okay? So once I got it, I know it doesn't bother me anymore. Can you do this? Can you do that? What do you do this? Pick that. What about this? What about that? And I just sit there listening. I don't say anything. And then I just sneak away. <laughs> don't you see how brilliant it is? The, huge. It doesn't bother me. I had a guy stand up in my office one time about a year and a half ago, and he was chock full of demons. He started yelling at me. He started yelling. I mean, pitching a fit right in the office, right there. I mean, really pitching a fit. Hands going. You ever see anybody get a pit, pitch a fit that big? They got hands going at you. See? Look at Mark Spitz. That dated me. You hear that? That dated it. You didn't get that, did you? That's funny. He's up on my desk like this. My desk right there. He's right here. I just sat there quietly just looking at the guy. Never said a word. Pretty soon he got pooped. Oh, and another thing. Yo. Oh, God. I just sat there quietly and didn't move. Never said a word. Never said a word. He pooped himself out. 
<laughs> sat down in the chair again. I said, now where were we? <laughs> Don't you understand? Aren't you listening to me? You, you have free will. You've been given your mind by God. You can control what you think about and you can control what you believe. Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. He said, if you choose. I wasn't. I didn't want to be talked to like a sixth grader. I wasn't up for it. But when I saw what was happening, and I saw the reason for it, I said, hey, wait a minute. I'm not going to ruin our lives and ruin my life by taking offenses at being talked to like I'm a sixth grader. Hello? <laughs> I'll close with this. He's lying again. Uh, I'm at the Dream Center one day and I'm explaining to the guys I'm explaining to the guys what God's will is for their life these guys are all addicts ex addicts and I'm explaining to them and I'm, I'm telling them I'm just telling them the truth I said listen I've I've taught at numerous rehab facilities in Arizona I've been around town I've been all over the place and I know how rehab facilities work Christian ones. And I said to him, I know there's a bunch of knuckleheads working here. I know there's people here that aren't very intelligent. And I said to him, some of them are in supervision. They're just all staring at me. They don't know what's coming next. And I said, God planted dummies over here to save your life. Now they're really staring at me. They think I'm on crack. I said, listen, when you were an addict and we were a sinner, you lived your entire life making your own decisions, and you are an incompetent failure. Oh, the eyes lit up there. Hey, this guy's not the Baptist preacher that comes in. No, I'm not. You ran your own life for years. You know where you ended up? Sitting here in front of me. And God is going to send you people that are so dumb, you can't even believe it. You know what God's going to tell them to do? They're going to tell you what to do. Because until you learn to submit, you will never be able to serve God. God only works with servants, not district managers. And then at the end, I told him I was going to pray for him. All of them were looking at me like, oh, God, what's coming next? I didn't disappoint him. I said, Lord Jesus, I'm asking you to send every incompetent supervisor that works here to every person here who's in rebellion and doesn't listen. I'm going to ask you to send every idiot you can gather, and I want you to have them tell them what to do all the time and when to do it. In Jesus' holy name. That's how you win. You learn to submit. Because addicts get fussy. Oh, yeah. They see somebody tell them what to do. They say, well, hey, right. You're wrong. You ever met an addict? Oh, they got answers coming out of there. They know all the answers. You idiot! They can point out everything about you. 
That's no good, deficient, or a failure. They'll give you advice. Spill it right out on you. How do you think they got in that rehab center? I just told you. You know what you need? Somebody stupid to tell you what to do. And you need to submit. Because if you won't submit, God can't trust you with the true riches of the Holy Ghost. God only works with servants, not CEOs. Nobody left. When I started the House of Healing years ago, I already told you this story. I'll close with this line. There was, there was nobody there. It was just me. And then I, somebody else came on. and Then we had a little sanctuary over there that had uh, 50 seats. I redid the building. And it was just me and another girl. And at the end of every service, somebody had to clean up. So I did it. I would, I would teach the sermon, refill the soap dish in the bathroom, clean the toilet, mop the floor, Gather up all the puke buckets, take them in the trash can, empty them out, wash those out, put them back in. What was I doing there? Working on my anointing, emptying trash bags. Oh, that should have landed. The Holy Ghost watches you all the time and he wants to see if you're serving, not directing. Well, I'm a faith healer. I'm a deliverance person. Oh, God, what a pain in the ass. Get rid of that guy. Get rid of the other, get the other guy in who serves. That's how you can get healed. That's the one you go to. The guy that serves. Well, that's what I'm talking about. No, what I'm talking about is the anointing, serving others. The superpowered saints came out of the revival 2,000 years ago. Stephen, Philip, you know what they were? Table servers. Who's going to clean all these trash cans up? I told the Lord, I'll do it. I want you to heal these people. We shook on it. He showed up to heal the people. I gathered up the trash cans. Do you want the Holy Ghost anointing? Do you? No, you don't. There's trash cans for you to clean. I can't do that, Brother Mike. I've got a rejection demon from childhood. I need somebody, I need somebody to puff me up. No, you need to get down on your knees. There you'll get healed. Down here. You'll fail doing it. I failed a couple nights. You know, I was I stayed late. I was there by myself, cleaning up buckets, grabbed one bucket, wasn't watching what I was doing. I hope that was a good deliverance. I just washed my hand off and finished the buckets. Why? I was working on the anointing. I want to be a servant. Huh? 
the apostasy of TV preachers. Can't you see it? They're not servants. They're God-like figures. Okay? You know, screw God-like figures. Give me the trash cans. I'll clean them out and I'll put them away. And God had mercy on me. Years later, God sent other people to learn deliverance. And then, and then they started cleaning up the trash cans while I ducked out the back. Yeah. Yeah, I had an anointing for escaping. Oh. Let's pray then.